Hello everyone, I hope you are doing well. So in this video, we are going to discuss Geeks or Geeks problem of the day and today's problem is count digit groupings of a number and it is a medium level problem. So the problem basically says that we have been given a string. We have to divide this whole string in such a way such that like each of these substrings will have some sum value. And for each substring, its sum value, that means the sum of its digits should be less than or equals to the sum value of the substring just to the right of it, right. So for example, in this particular case, uh, we if we calculate the sum value of all of these substrings, for this it will be 1, for this it will be 2 and for this it will be 9. Now, now for all of these substrings, the sum value is less than or equals to the sum value of the substring just to the right of it, right. So, this is 1 which is less than or equals to 2, this is 2 which is less than or equals to 9. Now we have to find all such valid groupings. Now if you look at more examples, for this example you can see it is 1 here and it is 9, 10, 11 here. It is 1 here, it is 1 here, then it is 10 here. It is 1, 1, 1, 3 times and then it is 9 here. It is uh, like 2 here and here it is 10 here. It is 3 here and here it is 9 and this is only one substring, so it is also a valid substring. Now, uh, if you consider all of these ways together, there will be total 7 number of ways to form this particular uh, substring from this particular string, right. So now the question is, how do we actually solve this problem? Uh, first of all, uh, I tried to solve this problem with db. So let me just make you understand how we think about these db states. First of all, we know that we have an array, right. If I decide to break it, break this particular array somewhere, let us say here or here or here, I do not know yet, but let us say I want to break it somewhere. The only thing I need to know is what is the sum of this last array, right. After the break, there will be a new sub array, right. So what is the sum of this last sub array and what was the sum of the sub array next to it, right. So this is exactly what I tried to achieve with this particular DP states. So let me just tell you my dp of ij, dp of ij is going to denote i is the ending position and j is the sum of the next subarray, right. So now how can we calculate this? dp of ij together, together they are going to store the answer for the subarray ending at i position i position i when the sum of the next sub array is j right so basically this dp of ij is going to find me the answer of my array when my sub current sub array is ending at position i and the sum of the next sub array is j right so if i know that my sub array is ending at this particular position i and the sum of my next sub array is j, can I figure out certain suitable breaking points, right. So how do I find those break breaking points? Let us say I want to break the array from here only, right. I want to take this whole sub array. I can try to figure out whether it is possible or not. How can I figure this part out? With the help of prefix sums or suffix sums, I can easily figure out the sum of this particular sub array and I can compare it with j. If it is less than equals to j, that means this is a suitable breaking point and this whole sub array can be considered as one, right. Now, let us say I move on to the next point, I try this particular point as a breaking point, right. So when I try this particular point as a breaking point, I can figure out the sum of this particular sub array, right. And I can check whether this sum is less than equals to j or not. Similarly, I can try this particular point and then figure out whether this sum is less than equals to j or not. Right. So this is how you can solve this particular problem. Now let us discuss the base cases and transitions for this particular DP. So base cases, what are going to be the base cases? I know my answer will always exist. Let us say if I am talking about sub arrays ending at position i, right. So let us say I am considering all sub arrays which are starting from 0. So if a sub array is starting from 0 and ending at position i, then I know what is going to be its sum, right. If I know its sum for all the values, for all the values of j, where the sum is greater than equal to the sum of this particular array, 
I can mark those positions as one because I know for these positions my answer will always exist, right? So what I'm going to do here is, let's say I'm going to start my for loop from zero, going till less than n, and going till uh, this particular value n. Now, uh, now what I'm going to do? Let's say my sum int sum is equals to let me I'm just writing it in a pseudo manner, so it's from zero to i. Right, i sum is less than the maximum sum, let's say, and sum plus plus. So basically, what I'm trying to do here is, I'm trying to start uh, set the ending point from for every point from zero to less than n. Now my sum should be equals to minimum sum that is required is the sum of the subarray from zero to i. For all these positions, p p of i sum, my answer is going to be one. So this is going to be my base case. Now talking about the transitions, how do we set the transitions? So let's say I'm create, I'm going to create a helper function, int helper, i int j, right? So what I'm going to do here is, if i is equals to equals to minus one, I'm just going to return zero. Otherwise, what I'm going to do, I'm going to like, uh, if my answer is save, answer is saved, return answer. Right, and then I have to do some calculation. Do calculation for i and j. Right. Now, for doing the calculation for the current i and j, I have to find a suitable breaking point. So let's say my breaking point, breaking point starts from zero. My breaking point can at most go up to i, and my breaking point has to increase. Right. Now, if let's say I am just going to define a current sum, current sum. And it is going to find me the sum from this breaking point up to i, right? So basically, I am considering, let's say, what I am saying is, my i is i know here. I am choosing a breaking point starting from this particular position and going all the way up to i, right? Let's say I decide my breaking point as this one. So I am going to find the sum of this particular subarray. Right, so that is exactly what I am doing here. I am trying to find the sum from this breaking point up to i. Right, once I find this, once I find my current sum, what I am going to do here is I am going to check whether current sum is less than equals to my j. That is the sum of the next subarray. Then I am going to add dp of i j plus is equals to helper of uh, what is going to be this particular part since my breaking point. Is this one now? Let's say I define my breaking point here, right? So now my new ending point will be this one, right? Breaking point minus one. This will be the new ending point. And what will be the sum of the next sub sum of the next subarray? It is going to be the sum of this particular subarray which we just calculated. So I'm going to call my helper of. I'm going to call my helper of breaking point minus one, comma current sum, right? So you see what I just did. The very first thing is. I have, uh, I'm going through all the breaking points. Now, once I have fixed one of my breaking points, let's say I start decide to break my uh, array from here. Now, if I break it from here, my subarray is going to be this one. I need to compare the sum of this subarray with the sum of the next subarray. When I figure out that it is smaller than the sum of the next subarray, then what I'm going to do, since this was my breaking point, my new subarray will be ending at this particular position, which is just before the breaking point, right? And for that particular subarray, the sum of the subarray is going to be the sum of this subarray, right? So this is what I'm doing. I'm calling br minus one and the current sum so that it can act as the sum of the next subarray, right? And I can compare the value of uh, that breaking point with this particular current sum now. So at the end, after all of this has been done, I can just return, I can return dp of ij. So where is my final answer going to be stored? My final answer. Final answer will be in dp of i and max. So i means here, here i means n minus one. That is the last position. So what is max here? Max is the sum of all the values in the subarray. Why? Let me discuss this part as well. So let's say you are considering this particular subarray. We know that we can take the whole array as one of the answers, one of the valid answers. So in that particular case, my next sum subarray, which does not exist, but I have to assume that it exists. Its sum should be equal to the sum of all the elements in this particular range max. 
only then i'll be able to take this whole sabare otherwise i'll not be able to take this whole sabare so the uh, like uh, imaginary sabare that exists next to it should have a sum equals to the max which is the sum of all the elements inside this particular array only then i'll be able to take the complete array as one of the answers this is why we take max here right max is sum of all the elements in the whole array right and one more interesting thing that i want you to observe is since all the values are non negative right so it has from 0 and up to 9 right so that means if i find a suitable breaking point right so let's say i find a suitable breaking point here now that particularly means that all the breaking points after it will all will also work because what i am doing if i make the size of this particular array smaller and smaller the sum is only going to decrease right the sum is only going to decrease and it is always going to be less than the sum of the next sub array right so that basically means you just have to find the first point where your sum is less than this particular required sum after that all the points will be having the same thing for this you can apply binary search or something to make this for loop even more efficient right so this way you will be able to find this first breaking point in logarithmic time and you don't have to make this for loop so i have not done this particular optimization in my code but this is a very sweet optimization with the help of which you can figure out what is the first point at which you can find a suitable breaking point for the given sum now if you have found that suitable breaking point all the points after it will also be a suitable breaking point because the uh, sum the sum of this particular sub array is only going to decrease from here on right so now let us have, have a look at the final code how i implemented it so you see first of all i have created a, a size n which is the size of this particular string now i have created a suffix vector now i wanted to store the uh, sums in suffix vector so that i can calculate the sum of each sub array in constant time i have also initialized my max with 0 so it is going to basically store the sum of all the values inside my array now uh, this is a simple reverse for loop to store the suffix sums and updating max plus is equals to string the current element basically so i'm just taking the current character and subtracting zero from it so that i can convert it into integers similarly i do the same thing for the suffix as well now i have initialized my dp with n plus 1 cross max plus 1 and all of the values are zero initially now i am starting from i is equals to 0 till less than n basically i am considering all the ending points from 0 to less than n and i am considering the current sum with the sum of the sum array starting from 0 till i right so this is basically my base case i am doing suffix of 0 minus suffix of i plus 1 basically the sum from 0 to i right now i am going to make my j for loop till max plus 1 now for all of these positions where i am considering the first sub array to be ending at i my next whenever my next sum is equal to j my answer is going to be 1 that means the answer is at least 1 in this particular case now i have three simple for loops i have tried to like name the variables in such a way so that it is understandable the first for loop is for the ending position the second for loop is for the sum and the third for loop is for the breaking point right now i can easily figure out my current sum with suffix of br minus suffix of n plus 1 right now Let's say if my current sum is less than equals to my required sum, then my dp of n sum plus is equals to my br has to be greater than zero. Only then I will be able to access br minus one. Whenever my current sum is less than equals to my required sum, I am going to set. I am going to add dp of br minus one comma current sum to it. Right now I have already told why I have taken br greater than zero ternary operation here because if br equals to zero, dp of minus one should not be accessible because it is an invalid index. Right. otherwise i just return 0 and at the end i can just return dp of n minus 1 max so let me just first quickly submit this and show you that this particular code works and this solution is absolutely correct okay so i got tle i don't know why it just worked i submitted the same solution if uh, i show you my submissions you can see that i have submitted the exact same solution So this is the solution I just submitted, and it worked. This is the submission, and it is not working right now. Let me just try to submit this again. Okay, so this works now. I don't know, like uh, it happens with GFG sometimes. So if this solution is not working, I request you to kindly submit it a couple of times. 
I believe then it should definitely work. Because if you see the overall time complexity is roughly n cube only. This first for loop is 4 of n. The second for loop will at max go up to 9 into n and this third for loop is also up to O of n. So the complexity is roughly n cube only. So 4, 6, it would be at maximum even if you uh, like it will be 9 into n right. Even if we consider it to 10 into n, let me just write it and explain you it in a better way. So what I'm saying is we have three for loops. The first for loop is O of n. The second for loop is 9 into n in worst case because what we are doing is we are calculating the sum right. So this particular value will be max value will be at in worst case will be equal to 9 into n. So let us consider it, it as 10 into n. Third for loop is n as well. So the value of n in worst case is 100. So what we have 100 and uh, then we have 1000 and then we have 100. So this is 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So it is 10 is power 7 operations which I believe should work because it works in most of the cases. Here also it is working but sometimes it doesn't. So just for the sake of optimizing, let us just do that binary search thing as well. So what I want is, let's say I am going to define my breaking point. So low is equals to minus 1 and let's say my high is equals to what is my ending position? End. I am going to define my end. Right. So what I am doing here is, let me just remove this particular for loop. So I'm going to use the invariance technique, right? What the invariance technique signifies is that one of the conditions for low and high will always be true and the other one will always be false, right? So minus one can never exist. The first condition will always be false and n plus one will never exist. The sum will be equal to zero. So this condition will always be true, right? So I'm going to do a binary search while low is less than high plus one and int med is equal to low plus high minus low by two. I found out the midpoint and let me just try to figure out whether starting from this midpoint, my answer is going to be uh, less than equals to sum or not. So what I'm going to do, int current sum is equals to uh, suffix of mid minus suffix of n plus 1. If my current sum is less than equals to my next sum, then my high is going to be mid. Otherwise, my low is going to be mid. Right. Now I can try to, now since I have figured out the first uh, point with the help of binary search, I might continue the same loop int br is equals to high and br is less than uh, i n plus 1 and br plus plus, right. So we have tried to optimize the same code a little bit and let us see what happens now. So let me first compile this and see whether this works or not. Yep, so it is passing here. Let me submit this. I don't understand like uh, why this gives me error because the same code is passing multiple times and the same code is failing again and again. So you see now it got passed earlier with the normal thing it was 0 0.86 seconds something and now it is 0.76 a slight optimization over the same technique and uh, i still don't understand this behavior of geeks so geeks it happens a lot of times to me so if it is happening to you right now just uh, try to submit this again and again and it will work so i believe that is it for this particular video i hope that you guys were able to understand the solution if you guys did, then consider dropping a like on this video and don't forget to share thoughts in the comments because your engagement with this particular video really, really helps the YouTube algorithm to understand that this video is actually helpful for you and it will be able to reach much more people like you who want to keep solving new problems. So that is it for today. Till the next video drops, keep coding, stay safe, bye-bye.